Columbus made a difference. And the entire state of New York recognizes that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Martins. Senator Akshar. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise this afternoon with a great deal of humility, keenly aware that I have succeeded a man who has dedicated his life to others with an immeasurable amount of honor and integrity. So where does one begin when having an opportunity to speak about a political giant, a dedicated public servant, and a man who loved his family more than anything else? I really only got to know Senator Libis over the last five or six years. And during that time, it was clear to me that serving the constituency was at the forefront of the Senator's mind. I couldn't agree more with Senator Flanagan when he said of Senator Libis, if you were his constituent, your cause was his crusade. No truer words have been spoken. I reflected a little bit about my time that I did get to spend with Senator Libis. I was a political newcomer, a rookie, if you will, looking for an opportunity to get his ear, get a photo with him, which he was always happy to do, not only with me, but uh, for everybody that he served. A couple of years later, he asked me to emcee an event for him. It was about the crash zone safety bill that he was pushing. I did. I was a captain in law enforcement. A follow-up lunch where Libby sat me down and asked me about my future plans. I went on and on. I was so happy he was listening to me. I wanted to run for sheriff. It was just going to be the greatest thing. And he said to me, things change in politics. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Who would have ever thought a year and a half I'd be standing here having this conversation? Thursday night dinner at the Park Diner, which we all know that he loved. And then came the phone call when I decided to run. It was Libis. The first thing he said, this is not an endorsement call. Talk about nervous. <laughs> I think he put me through the ringer just like Warren put him uh, through the paces. And I remember very vividly my last conversation I had with the senator, Monday before he passed. Mary and I stopped to see him before we came here. He gave me some advice on life. And then he talked about public service. And I think this goes... This really goes to the type of person that Tom Libis was. In the waning hours of his life, he was talking about serving the public. He said to me, build that Binghamton University Pharmacy School. Make sure the Greenway gets built. And damn it, take care of my Binghamton Mets. <laughs> it's been said many times since I've been elected and since we lost Senator Libis that I have big shoes to fill. I couldn't agree more. Some might suggest that following in the footsteps of someone like Senator Libis would be a daunting task. It may be to some. However, when you have been able to witness firsthand the right way to do this job and have been able to study under the tutelage of someone like Senator Libis, it makes the task so much easier. So to Fran, the people of the Southern Tier, and to my colleagues in this great house, I want each of you to know that I stand ready to proudly walk in his footsteps, work hard every day to fill his shoes, and continue the long Southern Tier tradition of public service before self. And Mr. President, if you will indulge me, I'd like to leave you with a quote by Teddy Roosevelt that Senator Libis kept in his office for many years. It is not the critic who counts not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust, sweat, and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again because there is not, no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasm, the great devotion, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails with daring greatly, so that this place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. I would respectfully offer that Tom Libis lived by those words. And I pray 
as Senator Libis is looking down, smiling on all of us, and I pray that God will continue to bless the Libis family. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Akshar. Senator DeFrancisco will close. Senator DeFrancisco. Thank you. I have the honor of closing because I have the honor of sitting at his desk. And it is truly an honor. I've known Tom for a long time, and I've got many, many stories. But I'm not going to tell any of them. I just want to talk about just a couple of things. Uh, quite frankly, I believed that Tom was indestructible. I, tr I truly, truly believed. And it was a shock, despite what his, his passing, despite what he was going through, it was a shock that he died. I have never, ever, and I've been around a while, seen anybody who went through what he went through in the end of his life and always have a smile on his face. I thought he was indestructible. People have mentioned this before. He, he never, ever, ever complained. In this society that we've created of victims where everybody has a problem and you've got to deal with it, he was not a victim. He was the person that took care of the victims and wouldn't even take, he would not take, any kind of statement that would, was negative or, or concern about him. Don't worry about me, was said many times. Absolutely true. He was totally indestructible, and he still is as far as I'm concerned, because he's always going to be here. The funeral was absolutely beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. And uh, I've been to funerals before of past people who've passed from the legislature. But you know, maybe it's because my age, because I'm getting up there. Uh, I started thinking of something, and because all of us complain about something as we're doing our job. All of, all of us do, and I certainly do. But what it brought to my attention, because of Tom's character and the, the way he was, is that, you know, we all forget what a blessing we have to be serving here in this body with so many people of diverse backgrounds and philosophies that we can call friends, that we can actually have a good time with as we're doing this work. And that came out at that funeral and never came out before at any of the others that I've gone to because he was the epitome of friendship. And uh, hopefully as we go forward, we will think of Tom as a model in which we can continue to conduct business and be thankful rather than be concerned about some of the difficulties of doing this work. So all I'm going to do to close uh, is in Tom's program at the service, there was a poem. And uh, Tom is probably up there now saying, will you guys please shut up? Let's get this thing over. But this poem is perfect. It's based on a poem, Remember Me, by David Harkins. And the section that they pulled out, and the family obviously knew the right one to do. You can shed tears. You can shed tears that he is gone, or you could smile because he has lived. You can close your eyes and pray that he'll come back, or you can open your eyes and see all that he's left. Your heart can be empty because you can't see him, or you can be full of love, the love you shared. You can turn back your back on tomorrow and live in yesterday, or you can be happy for tomorrow because of yesterday. You can, mem you can remember only that he is gone, or you can cherish his memory and let it live on. You can cry and close your mind, be empty and turn your back, or you can do what he'd want. Smile, open your eyes, love and go on. Rest in peace, friend. Thank you, Senator DeFrancisco. Before I call the question, again, want to acknowledge uh, the family's presence here. His brother, sister, sister-in-laws, brother-in-laws, Fran, Matt, and Nick, and uh, Katie. 
You've heard so many poignant stories today, and you've seen us not only express the sorrow of this house, but our appreciation for sharing time with not only the New York State Senate, the people of the Southern Tier, but the people of the State of New York. Even during the challenges that he faced, he possessed courage, perseverance, and faith. There's no Lebanese saying that says talking isn't doing. Well, he did some talking, but he did a lot of doing. He, uh, he was just born with the ability to change lives, and that, uh, that he didn't waste. That ability was put to good use. So today, as we stand prepared to vote on this resolution, we remember that he was a loving family man, but also a good friend to each and every member of this House, because the best way to friendship is truly is to be a friend, and that he was consummately. And among all his pursuits, as we heard today, his true interest was in service. He cherished that. And the poet Emerson once wrote, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in service. Tom exemplified that, and he, pers and, and he was a personification of that. So like his beloved New York State Mets, simply put, Tom was amazing. The question is on the resolution. All in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, the resolution is adopted. I ask all present at the leader's request to rise and honor and celebrate the life of Tom Libis. Senator DeFrancisco, the resolution has been adopted. Can we now take up resolution 5540 by Senator Croce and read the title only and then call on him? And by the way, Senator DeFrancisco, at the request of the leader, that resolution has listed all the members on it. Great. Uh, Secretary will read. Legislative Resolution Number 5540 by Senator Croce, congratulating the Conequat High School Girls Volleyball Team upon the occasion of capturing the 2015 New York State Public High School Athletic Association's Class AA Championship. Senator Croce. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'd like to speak on the resolution. It's fitting that after honoring uh, a great public servant with a lifetime of accomplishments that we are now recognizing an accomplishment that I think these girls will remember for their lifetime. Uh, and so I'd like to tell you about a, a school at the end of 7th Street in Bohemia, Konequat High School. And in 31 years, Konequat High School has not had a girls' championship. But today, we're recognizing the Konequat High School girls' volleyball team in winning the state championship. They're not only great athletes, led by great coaches from an extraordinary community, but they're involved in helping other people while they're achieving athletic greatness. They have raised $3,400 this year to help with breast cancer research and charities on Long Island. And in six years, in the past six years, have raised over $20,000 to help breast cancer research. In addition to that, in addition to their community service and their athleticism, uh, they, have a, they have heart. And, and that's how they got to the state championship. Uh, so to Diana, Lauren, Sarah, Ashley, Nicole, Sophia, Gianna, Corey, Mackenzie, Taylor, Skyla, Cassandra, Mackenzie, Taylor, Daniela, Katie, and to their coaches, Karen Edwards, Ashley Marchese, and head coach Justin Hertz, uh, congratulations. You make us very proud to be New Yorkers. I am very proud to be your senator, 
And as an alumni and graduate of Connecticut High School, you make me very proud to be a T-Bird. If you would please stand, Mr. President, I would ask that the Senate recognize the 2016 Connecticut High School Girls Volleyball State Champs. Senator Boyle. Uh, as a senator representing Connecticut High School, I'd like to congratulate uh, the girls' volleyball team for their state championship. Uh, it has been a long time in coming, and uh, you are made history uh, for the entire state of New York and for Connecticut High School. And you got to witness also uh, a commemoration of, uh, of a great New Yorker, Senator Tom Libis. Uh, when you go home, Google him. You'll see the great works he did, and he would be very proud of you as well. Thank you so much, and we look forward to seeing you back home on Long Island. Thank you, Senator Boyle. Again, we offer congratulations to Connecticut Girls State Champions. Appreciate you being here today. We extend the best of wishes to you and you extend the privileges of the House. Congratulations. Senator DeFrancisco. Could we take up both resolution points? Excuse me, Senator DeFrancisco. Uh, the question is on the resolution. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? The resolution is adopted. Thank you, I, Senator DeFrancisco. And I think it's open for co-sponsorship, if is. I'm not mistaken. It is. Should you choose not to be a co-sponsor, please notify the desk. Senator DeFrancisco. All right. Now, uh, would you please take up resolutions 4799 and 4800, read both in the entirety, take a vote on the first one, after, and then we will all speak, whoever wants to speak, after the second one is read in view of the hour. We will read both and then we will take two separate votes and then call upon members to speak. Secretary will read. Legislative resolution number 4799 by Senator Diaz, celebrating Taiwan Heritage Day to strengthen the friendship and bilateral relationship between the state of New York and Taiwan. Whereas the United States and Republic of China share common ideals and a clear vision for the 21st century where freedom and democracy are the foundation for peace prosperity and progress, and whereas Taiwan has become a multi-party democracy in which all citizens have the right to participate freely in the political process, as evidenced by Taiwan's six democratic presidential elections, which took place in 1996, 2000, 2004, 2008, 2012, and 2016. And whereas this legislative body is justly proud to congratulate President-elect Dr. Tsai Ing-wen and Vice President Dr. Chen Zhenyan on their victory in Taiwan's presidential election on January 16, 2016, making Dr. Tsai the first female president of the Republic of China in history. And whereas this legislative body is justly proud to congratulate the Honorable Lily L. W. Su, the, the new ambassador and director general of the Taipei Economic and Cultural Office in New York for assuming office on January 20, 2016, as a seasoned career diplomat of the Republic of China and the first female ambassador of TECO in New York. And whereas, through cross-strait dialogue, the establishment of the Economic Cooperation Framework Agreement with mainland China and the policy of viable diplomacy, President Ma ying of the Republic of China has transformed the Taiwan Strait from a major international flashpoint into an essential component of East Asian peace and prosperity. And whereas, in 1979, the United States passed the Taiwan Relations Act to define the relations of the United States and Taiwan, which strongly strengthened their friendship. And whereas the United States and Taiwan share a long-term and close economic relationship, including $66.6 .6 billion in bilateral trade in 2015, making Taiwan the ninth largest trading partner of the United States. And whereas the United States assisted Taiwan in attaining participation in the Assembly of the World Health Organization since 2009, in the International Civil Aviation Organization in 2013 and will continue supporting Taiwan's meaningful participation in other international organizations such as United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change and Interpol. And whereas, in order to strengthen bilateral trade relations with the United States, the government of the Republic of China has expressed its wish to participate in the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement and to sign a bilateral investment agreement and a free trade agreement with the United States in the near future. And whereas the state of New York exported $844 million and imported $1.76 billion worth of products 
to and from Taiwan in 2014, making Taiwan the 15th largest foreign market for the state of New York. And whereas many of the United States' top 500 companies headquartered in New York, including IBM, Pfizer, Corning, Citigroup, AIG, MetLife, J.P. Morgan Chase, Merrill Lynch, and New York Life have invested in Taiwan, supporting the mutually beneficial relationship for decades. And whereas there are more than 300 Taiwanese companies that have invested in the state of New York in sectors such as computers, finance, jewelry, sporting goods, and garments. And whereas the state of New York is home to a thriving overseas ethnic Chinese community that supports the Republic of China, including the Chinese Consolidated Benevolent Association, the Chinese Chamber of Commerce of New York, Inc., Buddha's Light International Association in New York, the Taiwan Center, Taiwanese American Association of New York, the Union of Taiwan Universities and Colleges Alumni Association, and the National Women's League of the Republic of China that devotes themselves to harmony and development of the community of the state of New York. And whereas the New York State Legislature held the third Taiwan Heritage Day celebration at the Legislative Office Building in Albany New on, in April 2015 to promote bilateral relations between New York and Taiwan. It will hold the fourth Taiwan Heritage Day celebrated in 2016. Now, therefore, be it resolved that this legislative body pauses deliberations to celebrate Taiwan Heritage Day to strengthen the friendship and bilateral relations between the state of New York and Taiwan. And be it further resolved that copies of this resolution suitably engrossed be transmitted to President Ma Ying Yao of the Republic of China through the Taipei Economic and Cultural Office in New York, President elect Dr. Tsai, Tai Ying Wing, Vice President elect Dr. Cheng Zhen Yan, and the Honorable Lil Lily L. W. Su, the new Ambassador to the Director General of the Taipei Economic and Cultural Office in New York. Question is on a resolution. All in favor signify by saying aye. Opposed, resolution is adopted. Secretary will now read resolution 4800. Legislative Resolution 4800 by Senator Diaz commemorating the 150th anniversary of the employment of large numbers of Chinese laborers on the construction, <coughs> excuse me, of the Central Pacific portion of the Transcontinental Railroad on April 12, 2016. Whereas it is a sense of this legislative body to recognize and commend events which symbolize the historical, social, and cultural development of this great state and embody the spirit of the principles upon which this nation was founded. And whereas attended to such concern in a full accord with its long-standing traditions, this legislative body is justly proud to commemorate the 150th anniversary of the employment of a large number of Chinese laborers on the construction of the Central Pacific portion of the Transcontinental Railroad to be fated at a Chinese Railroad Workers Celebration Gala organized by the Asian Pacific Islander American Public Affairs Association on Tuesday, April 12, 2016. And whereas this auspicious occasion will applaud and pay tribute to the accomplishments and contributions of the Chinese workers, despite facing severe prejudice, discrimination, social isolation, and a language barrier, as well as the inherent physical challenges of labor, the proud Chinese workers per persevered. And whereas in 1865, construction began on the Transcontinental Railroad, which was predominantly built by Chinese laborers. The Union Pacific Railroad faced a steep labor shortage and recruited heavily from the pool of able-bodied Chinese workers. By the second year of the railroad's construction, approximately nine out of 10 workers were Chinese. And whereas, unfortunately, many Chinese workers were often exploited, given the most difficult and dangerous tasks, and subsequently, thousands of Chinese workers lost their lives in the construction of the railroad. And whereas 12,000 hardworking Chinese men were tasked with backbreaking challenge of clearing the path through the Sierra Nevada mountain ranges. And whereas the sacrifices and labor, labor, laborious efforts made by the steady Chinese workers facilitated rapid economic growth and forever enriched American culture with the values of hard work and their vibrant culture. And whereas the Transcontinental Rail Railway marks a pivotal moment in American history, revolutionizing trade and travel goods could move across the country faster than ever before, and expectedly the increased trade facilitated economic growth. And whereas even though the majority of the work was done by Chinese laborers, the contributions have gone largely unrecognized in American history. 
these steadfast men took on the most dangerous jobs in the face of tremendous prejudice and epitomized mental fortitude that what is means to be courageous. And whereas it is the intent of this legislative body to commemorate those events of historical significance, which add strength, vigor, and inspiration to the cultural diversity and quality of the life of communities of the state of New York. And whereas it is the sense of this legislative body in keeping with its time-honored traditions to recognize and pay tribute to those individuals who foster ethnic pride and enhance the profile of cultural diversity, which strengthens the fabric of the communities of New York State. Now, therefore, be it resolved that this legislative body pauses its deliberations to commemorate the 150th anniversary of the employment of large numbers of Chinese laborers on the construction of the Central Pacific portion of the Transcontinental Railroad, and be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution suitably engrossed be transmitted to the Asian Pacific Islander American Public Affairs Association. Senator Stavisky. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, first, Da Jia Hao. Huan Ying Li Da Albany, which means hello and welcome to Albany. Uh, first, let me thank uh, Senator Diaz for introducing uh, these two resolutions, and particularly uh, his chief of staff, who is sitting in the back, Ann Noonan. Uh, they have done a, a terrific job in terms of the relationship with the uh, Republic of China, and we appreciate their work. Um, and welcome, Ambassador Lily L. W. Shu. She is the Director General of the Taipei Economic and Cultural Office, known as TECO, T E C O. Uh, interestingly, she is the first woman appointed as Director General of the uh, of TECO, and at the same time, uh, Taiwan, the Republic of China, has elected its first woman as president of the country, uh, Shai Ingwen. And I know our friends uh, on the other side of the aisle will be delighted to know that uh, the president has a master's degree from uh, that institution in central New York. Cornell. Uh, we also welcome to the chamber the Venerable Abbas. We welcome Franklin. <laughs> Franklin F. Y. Chen, the Deputy Director General of TECO. Uh, Ronnie Liu, who was the Political Affairs Officer at TECO. Um, we also welcome uh, Michelle Wang, who was the president of the Asian American, I'm sorry, Asian Pacific Islander American Public Affairs Association. And with her, with her on the floor is the vice chairman, Pao Ming Wang, and the honorary president, Kei Yu Li. Li. And in the gallery, we have the, our friends from Buddha Light International, from the New York City chapter. And I, I met with you a couple of weeks ago at Flushing High School when you had a, an event there. Uh, I, we welcome the, our friends from the Taiwan Senior Center. Uh, the Chinese New York Chamber of Commerce and the tai Taiwan community here in Albany. Very, very briefly, uh, Mr. President, uh, let me just say that the United States and the Republic of China has a very, very close relationship. Uh, it's a friendship based on democratic values uh, of concerns for both countries, whether it be economic trade, uh, development, climate change. Uh, we were helpful, and I remember writing a letter in 2009 for the World Health Organization membership for the Republic of China. Um, and it's a friendship that's also based on trust and on cooperation. Um, 
It's interesting that the businesses in China, for the most part, are small and medium sized as they are in the United States. And yet we have large countries, uh, large companies that uh, are starting to grow, uh, such as Foxcom and Quanto uh, Computer. And they are making products for our Apple computers and our Hewlett Packards and the, the Dell computers. And they have invested in New York, which is uh, certainly an example of economic cooperation. Lastly, let me just say that the literacy rate in Taiwan is 97%. And that is something that we should uh, look to and congratulate the Republic of China. And nowhere is this more apparent than in Queens County, where a number of us uh, are proud to represent, whether it be the, the cranes that you see on the street or the scaffolding covering the buildings or the cars honking their horns. This is where development is occurring. This is where we have tremendous economic growth, sometimes uh, uh, a little chaotic. But nevertheless, we respect the Chinese uh, business people who have come and made their home and made their lives in Queens. And they have contributed immeasurably to our, not just the economy, but to our social structure. They hold elective office. Um, they are an amazing part of my Senate district. And I say it many times, I'm so proud to represent so many people from the Asian community. Um, as far as the Transcontinental Railroad is concerned, because we're talking about the resolutions together, uh, there are many parallels with what happened in the, to the Chinese community in the 1860s and the American community with slavery. People came, 12,000 Chinese people came to the United States, many of them originally to work in silver and gold mining in, in California. And then when they started construction of the Transcontinental Railroad in 1863, they started in Sacramento with the Central Pacific and the Union Pacific started in Omaha, and they were meeting, they were going to meet in Utah. But it was the Central Pacific Railroad that hired so many, or conscripted, conscripted almost, so many people from China, 12,000 people. And they faced tremendous, tremendous difficulties, whether it be uh, blasting through the concrete, uh, blasting through the granite of the Sierra Nevada mountains, the avalanches, the um, snow drifts, the accidents that occurred. It was a very difficult situation. Many people were killed and uh, many more were injured. Uh, but the tunneling through the mountains and everything else came together uh, on May 10th, 1869, when the two railroads met and we had a transcontinental railroad. Uh, I was proud to visit the exhibit uh, of the Transcontinental Railroad in Queens at Teco's Flushing office. Uh, it was put together by the uh, Asian Pacific Islanders group, uh, Papa, I think, believe it is called. And uh, there's an exhibit in the Albany Room for us to look at after session. And uh, I suggest that this would be a very interesting exhibit. Uh, and I welcome again our friends from uh, the Republic of China. Uh, thank, you. thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Savisky. Senator Hamilton. Uh, yes, Mr. President. I rise to uh, salute uh, the members from Taiwan and also the Venerable Ru Yang uh, to you. And I just want to say that I have a large Asian population in my district, and my sister in law. Is, was born in Taiwan. And my sister-in-law says she is the true Taiwanese. She's the original Taiwanese. Who, uh, and she works hard. She has a strong work ethic, as do all Taiwanese people who are the new economic engine for development in our country. As you well, well not know, that Taiwan is called the eight, one of the eight, four Asian tigers for development. Taiwan ha has the 21st largest economy uh, in the world. So I just want to thank uh, Ronnie Liu 
for coming, my good friend, but also uh, even special thanks and acknowledgement of the ambassador, Lily L. W. Sue. Okay, so thank you for coming to Albany. Uh, it was a long day. Thank you for your patience. Uh, thank you all. She is she. She is she. Senator Espelyat. President, I rise also to welcome the delegation. Uh, it's Ambassador Lily Lu, first woman uh, ambassador of the Taipei Economic and Cultural Council in New York. And to also congratulate you for the fine uh, photo exhibit that we have, the Apapa photo exhibit. Uh, that was very, uh, very nice for you to bring that up here, to share that, those photos with us. And we want to uh, continue to have a good relationship with the Taiwanese community across the state of New York. Welcome to Albany. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Espelyat. The question is on the resolution. All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, the resolution is adopted.